Welcome back to day three of Carrie's Corner, where we're continuing our read of The Wind in the Willows by Kenneth Graham. And as you remember, we left off at a bit of a cliffhanger, disaster that was momentous indeed to their expedition, but simply overwhelming in its effect on the future career of Toad. They were strolling along the high road easily, the mole by the horse's head talking to him, since the horse had complained that he was being frightfully left out of it, and nobody considered him in the least. The toad and the water rat walking behind the cart talking together, at least toad was talking, and rat was saying at intervals, yes, precisely, and what did you say to him? And thinking all the time of something very different, when far behind them they heard a faint warning hum like the drone of a distant bee. <sniffs> Glancing back, they saw a small cloud of dust with a dark center advancing on them at incredible speed, while from out of the dust, a faint poop poop wailed like an uneasy animal in pain. Hardly regarding it, they turned to resume their conversation, when in an instant, as it seemed, the peaceful scene was changed, and with a blast of wind and a whirl of sound that made them jump far for the nearest ditch, it was on them. The poo poo rang with a blaring sound, shout in their ears. They had a moment's glimpse of an interior of glittering plate glass and rich leather and the magnificent motor car, immense, breath snatching, passionate with its driver tense and hugging his wheel, claimed all earth and air for a fraction of a second. It flung a cloud of dust that blinded and enwrapped them utterly and then dwindled to a speck in the far distance, changed back into a droning bee once more. The old gray horse, dreaming as he plodded along of his quiet paddock in a new situation such as this, simply abandoned himself to his natural emotions. Rearing, plunging, backing steadily, in spite of all the mole's efforts at his head and all the mole's lively language appealing to his better nature, he drove the cart backwards towards the deep ditch at the side of the road. It wavered an instant, then there was a heart-rending crash and the canary-colored cart, their pride and their joy, lay on its side in the ditch, a complete wreck. I'm gonna show you the picture now because that's what's happening. Look at that beautiful picture. Someone painted these pictures, an artist did. That's something you can do as you listen to these stories. The rat danced up and down in the road, simply transported with passion. You villains, he shouted, shaking both fists. You scoundrels, you highwaymen, you, you, you road hogs. I'll have the law on you, I'll report you, I'll take you through all the courts. His homesickness had quite slipped away from him. Toad sat straight down in the middle of a dusty road, his legs stretched out before him and stared fixedly in the direction of the disappearing motor car. He breathed short, his face wore a placid, satisfied expression and at intervals he faintly murmured poop poop the mole was busy trying to quiet the horse which he succeeded in doing after a time then he went to look at the cart on its side in the ditch it was indeed a sorry sight panels and windows smashed axles hopelessly bent one wheel off sardine tins scattered over the wide world and the bird in the bird cage sobbing pitifully and calling to be let out <laughs> The rat came to help him, but their united efforts were not sufficient to right the cart. Hi, Toad, they cried. Come and bear a hand, can't you? The Toad never answered a word or budged from his seat in the road, so they went to see what was the matter with him. They found him in a sort of trance, a happy smile on his face, his eyes still fixed on the dusty wake of their destroyer. At intervals, he was still heard to murmur, Poop, poop. The rat shook him by his shoulder. Are you coming to help us, Toad, he demanded. Glorious, stirring sight, murmured Toad, never offering to move. The, the poetry of motion, the real way to travel, the only way to travel, here, today, in next week, tomorrow, villages skipped, towns and cities jumped, oh bliss, oh poop, poop, Oh my, oh my. Oh, stop being a fool, Toad, cried the mole despairingly. And to think I never knew, the Toad went on. 
All those wasted years that lie behind me, I never knew, never even dreamt. But now, but now that I know, now that I fully realize, oh, what a flowery track lies spread before me now. What dust clouds shall spring up behind me as I speed on my reckless way? What cops I shall fling carelessly into the ditch in the wake of my magnificent charge? Horrid little cops, common cops, canary-coloured carts. What are we to do with him? asked the mole of the water rat. Nothing at all, replied the rat firmly, because there is really nothing to be done. You see, I know him of old. He is now possessed. He's got a new craze, and it always takes him that way in its first stage. He'll continue like that for days now, like an animal walking in a happy dream. Never mind him. Let's go and see what there is to be done about the cart. A careful inspection showed them that, even if they succeeded in riding it by themselves, the cart would travel no longer. The axles were in a hopeless state, and the missing wheel was shattered into pieces. The rat nodded the horse's reins over his back and took him by the head, carrying the birdcage in the other hand. Come on, he said grimly to the mole. It's five or six miles to the nearest town, and we shall just have to walk it. The sooner we make a start, the better. But uh, what, what about the toad? asked the mole anxiously, as they set off together. We can't leave him here, sitting in the middle of the road by himself, in a, the state he's in. It's, it's not safe. Uh, supposing another thing were to come along. Oh, bother toad, said the rat savagely. I'm done with him. They had not proceeded very far on their way, however. When there was a pattering of feet behind them and Toad caught them up and thrust a paw inside the elbow of each of them, still breathing short and staring into vacancy. Now look here, Toad, said the rat sharply. As soon as we get to the town, you'll have to go straight to the police station and see if they know anything about that motor car and who it belongs to and lodge a complaint against it. And then you'll have to go to a blacksmith's or a wheelwright's and arrange for the car to be fetched and mended and put to rights. It'll take time, but it's not quite a hopeless smash. Meanwhile, the mole and I will go to an inn and find comfortable rooms where we can stay till the cart's ready, until your nerves have recovered their shock. Police station complaint, murmured Toad dreamily. Me complain of that beautiful, that heavenly vision. Mend the cart? I'm done with carts forever. I never want to see the cart or hear of it again. Oh, Ratty, you can't think of how I wouldn't have gone without you and then I might never have seen that, that swan, that sunbeam, that thunderbolt. I might never have heard that entrancing sound or smelt that bewitching smell. I owe it all to you, my best of friends. The rat turned from him in despair. You see what it is, he said to the mole, addressing him across Toad's head. He's quite hopeless. I give it up. When we get to the town, we'll go to the railway station, and with luck, we may pick up a train there that'll get us back to Riverbank tonight. And if ever you'll catch me going out with this provoking animal again, he snorted, and during the rest of that weary trudge addressed his remarks exclusively to Mole. On reaching the town, they went straight to the station and deposited Toad in the second-class waiting room, giving a porter twopence to keep a strict eye on him. They then left the horse at an inn stable and gave what directions they could about the cart and its contents. Eventually, a slow train having landed them at a station not very far from Toad Hall, they escorted the spellbound, sleepwalking Toad to his door, put him inside it, and instructed his housekeeper to feed him, undress him, and put him to bed. Then they got out their boat from the boathouse, sculled down the river home, and at a very late hour, sat down to supper in their own snug little riverside parlor, to the rat's great joy and contentment. The following evening, the mole, who had got up late and taken things very easy all day, was sitting on the bank fishing, when the rat, who had been looking up his friends and gossiping, came strolling along to find him. Heard the news, he said. There's nothing else being talked about all along the river bank. Toad went up to town by an early train this morning, and he has ordered a large and very expensive motor car. And that brings us to the end of Chapter 2. We will start tomorrow on Chapter 3 called The Wild Wood. So stay tuned for more of The Wind in the Willows by 
Kevin Graham. Have fun reading and maybe making illustrations for books that you want to create. Bye-bye.